we've got questions. We've got answers. We have them in to answer them. Jeffrey Lyon from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. It is great to be with you as always, Bob. Great to have you. My inbox is full of questions, one of which I think is an easy one for you. It goes like this. What's the difference between a refundable and a non-refundable tax credit? Ah, a good question as we come into tax season here. These are the types of questions I expect we'll be seeing a lot of in the coming weeks and months. So credits across the board are dollar for dollar reductions in someone's tax bill. Now, because of that, credits are much more valuable than deductions because deductions only reduce your income. And so your net result or your net savings is your tax rate times your deduction. So for argument's sake, if you had a $10,000 charitable contribution deduction and you're in the 22% tax bracket, that would save you $10,000 times 22% equals $2,200. Your tax bill would be lower by $2,200. By contrast, a credit is a dollar for dollar reduction in taxes. So if you had a $10,000 credit, whatever you owed the IRS would actually be reduced by the full $10,000 amount. Now, when it comes to refundable versus non-refundable, the difference is at some point, if you have enough credits or and or a low enough tax bill, you will have gotten your full year's income tax down to zero dollars. You will have offset it. You will have paid no tax. You won't owe anything to the IRS. And that's it. Now, if your credit is non-refundable, that's the best you can do, right? Which sounds pretty good. I owe nothing. But a refundable credit is actually even better. A refundable credit from the IRS is one that says, you know what, not only do you not owe us any tax, but we're going to pay you. That's right. The IRS will pay you money. That's what a refundable credit is. And so different credits, some are partially refundable, some are not, some are totally refundable, some are not refundable at all. Each credit kind of functions differently. But ultimately, those refundable credits are the ones that are the most valuable because not only do they reduce your tax bill dollar for dollar, but in the event your tax bill goes below zero, you can actually receive effectively like cash back, be paid from the IRS. And this year, Bob, it's worth noting that more people will see the value of refundable credits than perhaps ever before. Because in 2021, there was not only the enhanced child tax credit amount of $3,000 per child and $3,600 per child if that child was under uh, the age of six at the end of the year, but the child independent care tax credit right? The credit that you get for uh, daycare expenses, et cetera. That maximum credit last year was $8,000. Normally it's a maximum of $2,100 if you have two or more qualifying children. But think about that. Two children who go to daycare, that's a $14,000 potential credit between the child tax credit and the dependent and uh, the child independent care credit. A lot of people do not have income tax bills that are more than $14,000. So that is great news for them. Yeah, it sounds like remarkable. So if you're a do-it-yourself uh, taxpayer, tax preparer, uh, will you know um, as you're filling out your return that this credit is refundable? Maybe. <laughs> if you follow the forms correctly, yes. But look, let's face it, the forms are complicated. There are mistakes that are we see from time to time on professionally prepared. In fact, not from time to time. It's not uncommon to see mistakes on professionally prepared returns. So certainly if you're doing it on your own, you're absolutely more likely to make a mistake. Anytime there's a change, it's one that I always suggest if you're going to reach out, you know, if you only use a CPA sometimes, maybe it's better to use them in those years. So that could be years where you have a change in career or maybe you retire, like a material difference in your life. You have kids that go to college for the first time. There's new credits you may receive there. This year, it may be the same credits, but they're dramatically different rules. And so if you're, if you're someone who's thought about reaching out to a professional tax preparer before, now might be a good opportunity to use them. Look, especially if you're gonna get a much bigger refund than normal, why not use some of that to cover a professional's fees and focus on the things that are really important in life, like family and time, like free up your time. The average American spends, I wish I remembered the statistic off the top of my head, but it was an unseemly amount of time preparing their taxes each year. Let someone else do that. I don't even like preparing my own taxes, Bob. <laughs> 
I don't like preparing my own either. Um, uh, and I do use a professional. Um, I always do a once over and then send it to the CPA to have them uh, double check what I've done. And more often than not, they find things that I didn't. So I'm, I concur. Uh, it, it, uh, it saves time and, and money hiring someone. And I guess if you itemize your deductions, uh, you might be able to deduct the cost of your CPA. So that used to be the case um, prior to uh, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. So the Tax Cut and Jobs Act eliminated miscellaneous itemized deductions, which is where you would uh, pay for a CPA. Now, that said, we always have to look for other ways to, you know, to resolve this. So let's say you have a business, right, a, a Schedule C sole proprietorship, or you uh, have a rental property, a Schedule E rental property, something like that, where there's a, a business going on. Well, the portion of your fees that are attributable to that business are deductible, right? And so tech, like, let's imagine you had a $500 tax bill and your CPA said, you know what, 60% um, of the work was really due to the Schedule C that I had to prepare because I have to keep track of all your business expenses, et cetera. Well, $300 of your $500 total fee could be added to your Schedule C deduction and subtracted there. So in essence, for the quote unquote, regular, normal tax return, there is no deduction. But for those who have business interests um, or rental properties, et cetera, you can deduct those as business expense to the extent your tax preparation fee is for that issue. Yeah, well, I think you answered that reader's question. And then we got some bonus answers around tax prep and how to um, maybe- well, tax time. Them. We love tax time. It is the most wonderful time of the year, at least for some of us. I know, we- I need a life, Bob. What can I say? So help me get a life. Send me some questions that I can answer along with Bob. Give us something to do. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to answering your question real soon.